Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant have discovered more highly radioactive water leaking from a storage tank. It's believed the water may have reached the ocean through a drain. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company tested the water. They say it contains 200,000 becquerels per liter of beta-ray emitting substances, including strontium. The safety limit is 30 becquerels per liter. The officials say the water is leaking from the upper part of one of the storage tanks. The tank is surrounded by a barrier, but the officials say it failed to stop some of the water from seeping out. The tank is located near the number 4 reactor, about 200 meters from the shore. TEPCO officials say they are stepping up measures to prevent more leaks. Now, you wouldn't know it, but I like people. I like people, but I like them in short bursts. I'm all right with them for a little while. But once you get up past around minute, minute and a half, I gotta get the fuck out of there. Managers of Japan's damaged nuclear plant have been trying to find out how four tons of radioactive rainwater spilled from a storage tank. They say workers at Fukushima Daiichi may have been pumping it into the wrong container. I have a very low tolerance level for stupid bullshit. An official with plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company says crews were pumping up pools of contaminated rainwater. A tropical storm passed over the complex last month. Rain built up inside barriers around the tanks used to store contaminated water. The crews may have transferred it into the wrong tank, leading to an overflow. Workers measured the level of radiation inside the tank after the leak. It was 13 times higher than the government safety limit for releasing tainted water into the ocean. For some reason, the level of radiation in the rainwater had doubled since measurements taken just after the storm. Plant managers are looking into what caused the spike. TEPCO officials have revealed the cause of a leak of radioactive rainwater at Fukushima Daiichi. They're blaming miscommunication with the subcontractor. And everyone wants to tell you their stupid bullshit. Workers with the subcontractor were mopping up rainwater left behind last month by a tropical storm. The water became tainted after it accumulated inside the barriers around contaminated water storage tanks. The workers pumped it into another tank. But about five tons overflowed and seeped into the ground. TEPCO officials say the workers sent the water to a small tank by mistake. The level of radiation inside the container was 13 times higher than the government's safety limit for releasing tainted water into the ocean. And so to bring the radiation levels down, the land must be cleaned. It is a massive task over a huge area. At this house, 20 miles from the plant, they're now removing topsoil, trees, plants, anything that's radioactive, and then covering it over with sand. The radiation level at this particular spot was 3,497 counts per minute, which is high and dangerous. Now by digging out the soil and covering it with sand here, they've managed to bring it down to about 400 counts per minute, which is obviously much lower and much safer. In fact, only a tiny fraction of the contamination will ever be cleared. But already it's creating another big headache. Where to put it all? Deep in the mountains, I was taken to see this temporary dump. It is astonishing to me to think that all this will still be radioactive long after my great, great, great grandchildren have come and gone. But will those future generations ever see something like this again? The Japanese government's own experts now admit this was not a natural disaster. In the Fukushima case, there were research papers suggesting that the 10 meter high tsunami could happen, but unfortunately this paper was dismissed. My memory is that after Chernobyl, we were promised very, very clearly that a similar accident could never happen. Well, we put 
need to be prepared for the worst case. We have to tell the public this is the worst case. If you tell the worst case, the public said, don't build a reactor near here. So uh, that was the dilemma. And if you want to continue to build a nuclear power plant, you have to keep telling the public the reactor should be safe. But now that myth has now been the myth is shown gone. to be a myth. Now the myth is gone. When the tsunami swept in here two and a half years ago, it revealed the shocking complacency of Japan's nuclear industry. It had assumed a tsunami on this scale would not happen within the lifetime of the Fukushima plant, and so it simply didn't bother to prepare. If such complacency can happen here in Japan, then it can almost certainly happen elsewhere too. Right. Okay, well you say there's no solution to the waste, but there is a solution to the waste, and the solution to the waste is to just leave it exactly where it is, and to have somebody look at it for, for a million years, you know. So, so they just have to have all these zombies who are there at the moment, sitting there doing nothing, who are going to just have to sit there, and their children are going to sit there, and their children's children and so on, looking at the waste, and making sure that it doesn't leak out of the tanks, and if it starts to look like it's going to leak out of the tanks, they build another tank around that tank, and then they build another tank around the tank that they built around that tank, and so on you know, to infinity. And that is a solution to the waste, because then the waste will just stay where it is now, and it won't get any worse. And if they make more waste, they'll have to put it inside that tank and leave it there. And as far as contaminated land is concerned, and places like Sellafield and all that, they'll just have to put a fence around it and say, this is contaminated land, do not enter. And so that's the best we can do. I mean, it doesn't help to put it down a hole in the ground. I mean, you may as well put it somewhere where you can keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't escape. So that's the solution. And why not put a hole in the ground? Ah, well, because then if something goes wrong, you can't do anything about it. That's the point. And what could be could go wrong there? Oh, God, well, loads of things could go wrong. I mean, the main thing that would go wrong is that it go, it's, it's a hole in, in the ground is not a secure depository, you know? I mean, you put it into a hole in the ground and then there's a crack in the hole in the ground or maybe there's a, an earthquake or, or maybe there's a fault that you didn't know about or maybe there's some water movement that, that changes over a period of time and we're talking geological time scale, so, you know, just about everywhere where they've suggested putting it in a hole in the ground has had a geological um, fault occurring, you know, uh, in, in the last thousand years, never mind about, you know, the next million years or whatever it is it has for the half-life of these uraniums and plutoniums. So you can't, you can't actually guarantee that if you put it in a hole in the ground, something won't go wrong. And you can't pull it out of the hole in the ground, that's the point. I mean, the, the, the Forschmark idea is not one in which they put it down in the hole in the ground and then they can take it out if something goes wrong. They can't. They just pop it down and pop the next one down and pop the next one down and so on and send it all down there and then they seal it all up. But if something goes wrong, then they can't do anything. Whereas if it's where it is at the moment, at Sellafield or wherever it is, above ground or in some kind of big hangar or big kind of area where they kind of look at it, then they can look at it. And if something goes wrong, they've got all their detectors and their Geiger counters and whatnot, then they can just repackage it and put something around it. But they have to sit there. Yeah, they have to sit there forever. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Well, it serves them right, isn't it? Shouldn't have made it in the first place. And I've no doubt they'll pay them a lot of money for sitting there. <laughs> so yeah, they can sit there. And, and, I mean, maybe they should have special uniforms, like you know, guard of the nuclear waste, and they could have like special kind of green uniforms with special badges, like Superman or something. You know, that make them feel good. <laughs> I've always thought it quite good to have special uniforms. In all the science fiction stories, they did special uniforms, you know. So you could say, what's your daddy do? Oh, he's a guard of the nuclear waste. Oh, no. <laughs> what a useful job, George. Yes, it is, isn't it?
The Prime Minister of Israel is urging the U.S. and other nations to keep up the pressure on Iran. Benjamin Netanyahu says they shouldn't lift sanctions until Iranian leaders completely abandon their nuclear development program. Wuhani is a wolf in sheep's clothing, a wolf who thinks he can pull the eyes, the wool over the eyes of the international community. Netanyahu accused Iranian President Hassan Rouhani of masterminding a strategy to advance the country's push to build a nuclear weapon. He said Rouhani's goal is the same as his hardline predecessor Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Netanyahu argued the only way to peacefully deter Iran is to combine tough sanctions with a credible military threat. He said Israel is ready to stand alone on the issue. A representative for the Iranian UN delegation rejected Netanyahu's accusations. Kodadad Seifi said that unlike Israel, Iran would not attack another nation. They are the greatest threat to the security of both the nuclear weapon has and have not. Seifi said Israel should not even think about attacking Iran. Netanyahu has become even more vocal on Iran after Rouhani showed he's taking a different approach to dealing with the U.S. The Iranian president took a call from President Obama last week. It was the highest level contact between the nations since they cut off diplomatic ties more than three decades ago.